Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Amesbury with APTA. We're very lucky to be joined by Team Mild Detox tonight. I'm going to introduce Nathan Santa. He'll be your moderator. Um, we encourage lots of questions and chatter. So use your chat to ask questions. Um, our panelists will answer questions at the end. And Nathan, I'll hand it off to you. Um, yeah, sounds good. So hi, everyone. My name is Nathan Santos. Uh, I'm a physical therapist myself at Myo Detox here in Vancouver, and I'll primarily be moderating this discussion. Um, I'm only asking the questions. The stars are all here, so I'll let them introduce themselves. So let's start off with uh, Shane. How about Shane? Why don't you introduce yourself, Shane? Tell us who you are, where you work, and about yourself a little bit. Thanks a lot, Nate. <clears throat> hi, my guy. My name is Shane. Yeah, I'm a physical therapist. I am the lead therapist at My Detox in West Hollywood, California. Um, I am, I've been a therapist for about eight years and I'm really from the East Coast. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Let's go on with uh, Kayla. Kayla, introduce yourself. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Kayla. I am the clinic director at My Detox West Hollywood. I'm originally from Oregon. I went to grad school at Midwestern University, so maybe I have some alumni on here. I don't know, but I'm excited to talk to you guys today. Awesome. And we'll move on to our next uh, two leaders there. And how about Andrew? How about you start off first? Good. Uh, I'm Andrew Spari. I'm the chief clinical officer here at Maya Detox, uh, physical therapist for 17 years now, based out of Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. And really excited to be here with and uh, excited to just meet. Um, our uh, American um, colleagues. Awesome. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have Vin Pham. So Vin, why don't you introduce yourself, give a little intro, how long you've been practicing, and tell us a little bit something about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I hate cheese. I actually can't stand cheese. That's like one of the things that I, I know a lot of people are, will, will hate me for saying that, but I actually cannot stand cheese. Anyways. Um, so my name is Vin Pham. I'm the chief brand officer, also one of the co-founders of Maudi Talks. Uh, I've been a physical therapist for 15 years now, um, and I graduated from McGill University, uh, Montreal. So me and Drew are the Canadians representing against all you Americans. <laughs> no, no, not, not against, I'm kidding. With, We're you know, with, the Americans. <laughs> with the Americans. With the Americans, with the Americans, of course. Awesome. Well, um, um, yeah. yeah, well, you know, starting with Shane, can you tell us about your journey that led you to Myo Detox in the first place? Oh, of course. Um, so I came into Myo when I was about five years uh, as a therapist already. And actually kind of just my uncle who actually followed Vin on Instagram. This is like 2014. I was a fresh grad out of school. I was like, hey, Shane, do you know this guy? He's a, he's a physical therapist putting out cool stuff on Instagram. I'm like, no, but let me follow him. Um, and then fast forward a few years later, I, by that time, I already moved to California. And then uh, an old colleague of ours, Miguel, actually went to undergrad with him in Baltimore. And then I saw him post something on Instagram and he was with Vinny. I'm like, oh, Miguel, you're a PT now? I had no idea. He's like, yeah, I'm at this clinic and uh, we're going to open a clinic in Los Angeles. And, you know, he told me the, uh, the company, what the uh, background of it was and the, the vision. And then by the time that I was looking for work, he actually like, we're looking for, you know, to, to build out our team some more. So if you're, if you're interested to come on and apply and kind of the rest is history from there. So I've been working there since 2019 um, of April. So I've been there ever since. Awesome. And Kayla, what's your, um, what's your journey to Myo Detox? How did you get led there? Uh, so funny enough, I also found Myo Detox through social media. So Woohoo social media. Um, I was in grad school. I was looking for something that resonated with me. And I was actually having a really hard time finding a practice that really spoke to how I wanted to treat. And um, when I found Myo Detox and I saw what they were doing in Canada, I was just really inspired. It seemed very different from what I was used to seeing in the traditional outpatient setting. So I reached out, um, I think two years before they even had a US clinic. And we just stayed in touch. I, you know, constantly reached out to Vin and Scott, the founders, and 
luckily for me, they did decide to open in the US and West Hollywood. So I got to be a part of the founding team and I've been there since. Social media seems to be a constant theme here. How about you, Drew? How did you end up here? Oh, uh, that could be a two hour story. So, but I'll try to keep it short. Um, I was in a clinic in North Vancouver and was looking to scale, was really, really interested in just making physical therapy as a whole, a larger conversation in everyone's lives. Um, was looking at the space, see if anybody was doing that. And Myo Detox was definitely ahead of that, like ahead of the game, that conversation. And um, a good friend of mine who had um, a, a, a bunch of clinics in Vancouver, Nick Lowe, he uh, had joined Myo the year before as the Myo's making expansion out to the West Coast and said, Drew, you need to uh, come join us. I know what you want to do in physical therapy in the space. Um, you know, we're positioned very uniquely to do that. And uh, I met Vin at a course that he taught in Vancouver and it was basically magic from there. And so we've been with Mayo since 2019, sorry, 2018. Awesome. And, and Vin, what led you to Mayo Detox? How did this all start? And then Drew said it would, it would have been like a two hour thing for me. It would have been, it would be like a two week thing of sitting through all the stories of how, what led me to, to start the company. But I would say like the, the main thing for me was just frustration. Uh, like, you know, grow. Um, I, I'll just speak for myself and my experience in the industry. It was just like um, when I, where I was working in Montreal, it was very like Montreal and Toronto. It was very like uh, run of the mill clinic. So it was like, I was seeing 40 patients a day, uh, putting people on IFC, ultrasound, heat packs, giving them a random hamstring stretch, uh, you know, here's the band, do an external rotation and then see you later, you know? And I was just rinse, repeat. And I really didn't feel like that was like quality care. Um, and I would get into fights literally with the owners of uh, uh, the, uh, the companies I would work at, the clinics I would work at. And then in the end, I was like, listen, like, I'm just gonna do my own thing because I see, um, I just, honestly, like, I'm gonna cry, like talking about this. I just care a lot about the profession, you know what I mean? So I just want to, um, I do think I just think that we can do so so much good for the world, and in order to do that, like we just got to do it properly. In order to do it properly, we have to control the variables. Therefore, I want to control the variable of doing good work. Therefore, I created my detox in order to do what I felt was the right thing to do, you know. And in turn, doing good work, um, I always believe that if you do good work, things good things will happen to you. And in turn, you know, um, remedy place up the street. Tony, can we? Yeah. <laughs> um, and in order to do good work, you know. Um, good things will happen to you. Sorry, good things will happen to you when you do good work. And obviously if you do good work, good people will start to assemble around you. And therefore now we have the, the team that you see before you and you know, 200 plus people more um, that I'm, I am grateful to be surrounded with, you know? So, Sale? That wasn't a bad job for a two week summary, Ben. That was pretty good. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> um, well, Ben, I think the big question is like, what is Mayo Detox? Um, how do we go with Kayla? Like, what is Myo Detox to you? So I would say just simply put it, Myo Detox, we're an interdisciplinary clinic. So we are ran by both physical therapists and chiropractors under the same roof. And we do provide traditional rehab-based medicine um, for a variety of injuries at all stages. However, what makes us unique is our emphasis on making therapy a lifestyle. So we emphasize continuous education, continuous movement optimization, and most importantly, injury prevention. That's my, that's my quick. That's a pretty amazing answer. Um, well, Vin, like, and for you, like, what, what is Myo Detox for you? Well, I mean, to the point of like, you know, what Kayla was saying, how what makes us different is essentially like, we're trying to make physical therapy a lifestyle, you know? everyone on this call or, you know, you, you ask everyone uh, in your immediate network and you go, Hey, listen, do you have like a, a, a doctor that uh, a doctor that you go to primary doctor? Most people would say, yes. You go, Hey, listen, do you have a dentist that you go to? People was like, Oh yeah, everyone has a dentist. You know what I mean? And you go, Hey, like, do you have a physical therapist or someone who takes care of your, their, your, your MSK, your muscles, your, your, your body? You know, some people don't even know what a physical therapist is. Do you know I mean, and that's, sad to me you know and in order for us to evolve as a profession like everyone in my opinion 
should have a physical therapist the same way everyone has a dentist and a doctor, right? Why doesn't everyone have someone to look at their motion, look at how their body moves, blah, 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 and assess them, stuff like that, you know, and check it with them like on a yearly basis, you know? Um, and that's kind of why, like, you know, the whole making self-care lifestyle, that's kind of like what we're trying to do, you know, making, making people understand uh, the importance of, of taking care of their body, so. I like yeah. that. It's, it sounds like it's, it's an emphasis on, it's not only about pain, it's about just moving better for life, I guess. Right. Yeah. Um, well, so if, you know, we, we are getting an idea of what myo detox is. So what, what disciplines do, do we focus on in, in the company? How about you, Shane? Like, uh, Kayla and like Kayla alluded to, uh, in the previous question, we are multi, we are, we are interdisciplinary. We have chiropractors and physical therapists that work here in the States with, at, the, at the clinics. And then we, we do essentially what you would think what the best thing would be for the, for the patient. So we utilize manual therapy, utilize exercise. Um, and then within those two buckets, it kind of depends on the treatment style of the, of the, of a clinician. So whether someone had experience with, you know, certain conditioning or PNF or different types of manual therapy. It's uh, the clinician is, is, is gets the one gets to decide kind of how they want to take the, the client and the patient on that journey. So um, we have you know PTs and chiros, and um, we kind of get to decide in terms of how we, the best way to treat the clients, and that's kind of reason why a lot of us are here. Yeah, and yeah, then and also yeah, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, yeah, I was sorry. gonna say like Ben, can you actually expand on that? So that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to expand and also answer a question in the in the chat. It's like, what went to your decision to partner with Kairos as opposed to OT, exercise physiologists and others? Uh, one of the main reasons, and is is in Canada, it was more like an insurance billing situation. It's like we were all grouped together, uh, physio, chiro, massage, and then an OT and exercise physiology and all these other things weren't grouped in, in how the Canadian system is run. Um, but having said that in the future, like my dream is for my to include everybody, like all, all health care professionals, you know, under one roof, you know? So, um, and um, to the point, sorry, also to, you know, to extend further on what Shane um, has said, like, you know, in when I was growing up and I feel so old saying this, but what, like, you know, in 2007, when I started physical therapy, as a young pup, we were trained to not like chiropractors. We were trained to think of chiropractors as the enemy and massage therapists as second-class citizens. It was actually really like weird how that was like enforced in our, our training um, that like these guys are the enemy. Oh, they just, you know, they're, they're really bad therapists, you know, all this stuff. And I honestly never really subscribed to this idea that other people, other uh, methods weren't good you know obviously everyone has good and bad therapists within their profession but I just didn't think that this profession as a whole should be vilified you know and working with a lot of great chiropractors massage therapists and other healthcare practitioners I started really liking their point of view on on the human body and in turn I wanted to incorporate a space where we could work together instead of against each other you know and even today like when I first when we first opened um um chiro uh, sorry mild detox in, in the U.S. When we would tell physical therapists that we would have chiros in the team, they, they weren't uh, mad about it, but they were like, really? Oh, I've never seen that before. You know, they were still kind of like a little bit like surprised at, at, oh, so like you guys work together. Um, and that's just my personal experience. Maybe in you, you guys' cases, wherever you're, you guys are from, um, you, it's normal to have a multidisciplinary uh, space. But for me, it wasn't, you know, and I, I just like that because it, it, it allows for more education, more cross um, ideation and stuff like that, so. Yeah, so then to continue on this discussion of this interdisciplinary approach, I think Kayla and Shane can speak best to this. Who are the clients we see in Maya, specifically in the States? Like who, who are the clients that are coming in? Actually, we can, we, there's a big breadth of people we actually see at the clinic. Um, we've got our weekend warriors, we have our, our desk workers, we have our professional athletes, and we see people from, uh, in terms of the ortho cases, post-operative, -op whether it be like <clears throat> something in the shoulder and the knee or even into neuro cases. So we see a big breadth of people. It all depends on kind of their touch point and how they actually learn about us. And that's kind of one of the big things. How do we reach out to more, more populations, more people who actually would need our help and our services. So 
we actually see, see a big breadth of um, type of type of clients, types of people, and different type of conditions. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, we really do see such a huge variety. Some some clients I would never expect to see. Like, you know, I had an asacral genesis, uh, scleroderma, Parkinson's client, drop foot, and it was really interesting to me actually the amount of neuro clients we were getting because we are traditionally an uh, orthopedic clinic, but something that really stood out with me for me was a lot of these clients coming in, let's say with Parkinson's or uh, my client with drop foot, they had never had hands put on them. So no touch was ever done to them when they were in a clinic. It's almost as if like, because they were a neuro based client, they were automatically put into the, okay, we'll do some movements with you, maybe some, um, ultrasound, some stem, et cetera, but they never really experienced joint mobilizations, myofascial work, et cetera. And so I found it to be really impactful to have these clients that did have neuro related issues and see some of the results they were getting from manual input. So I thought that was uh, something that was really cool to see too at our clinic. Kayla, would you say that for some of the clients that came in that it was a little bit different for them to have this one-on-one -on -one care that was focused more on manual therapy and exercise versus traditional modalities like like Ben said earlier like the heat the stim all the, the fun ultrasound etc yeah. yeah I mean something and I can agree with Ben is that it makes me sad when my clients would come in and they would explain kind of their experiences maybe they saw a PT for three four months two three times a week you know, paying a pretty high copay, $50, $70 every visit. And they were doing the same thing over and over and over. They weren't being re-examined. They weren't be being addressed head to toe. And things that were just so obvious um, right in front of me, you know, they hadn't been addressed at all. So for me, I think it was just interesting because they would kind of come to us as like a Hail Mary, you know, it's like, who is this like new, you know, myo detox, this different approach. They've come to us seeking that one-on-one -on -one care because they had tried so many other things. And, you know, what I'm hoping to see with our industry is that there is an emphasis and a focus on quality and, and not quantity and looking at um, people as a whole. So. You know, and and I heard, I heard you mention head to toe. So I guess my next question, like what does a myo detox session look like? Uh, Andrew hasn't talked much. Andrew, what, what is a myo detox session looking like? Um, well, I mean, it starts obviously with initial assessment and you know, that's a combination of uh, taking our subjective, listening to, you know, our client's history, um, any, you know, contributions uh, from previous injuries, uh, mechanism of injury, listening is such an important part that we emphasize in our training to our therapists, making sure that, you know, I, one of my mentors told me, if you listen long enough, you know, your patient will tell you what's wrong. If you continue to listen further, they'll tell you how to fix it. So, you know, part of the assessment involves a lot of um, listening, making sure our, our patients feel heard. And then we do, a, you know, a thorough objective examination that does, you know, we don't want to pigeonhole ourselves in looking at just where the area of complaint is. We like to look outside of that and um, understanding that, you know, there are many things that contribute to how our patients present. So we look at, uh, you know, the areas above and below, and even sometimes quite distal to like where the, the problem area is. Um, and then we do our, uh, you know, some treatment and that treatment is just, you know, to, uh, you know, confirm and or corroborate what we're looking at from an examination standpoint. So we'll see how people respond to some manual therapy, um, you know, which includes joint mobilizations um, and myofascial uh, release techniques that you may have seen uh, on social and whatnot. But we also then reinforce all of that with um, with movement. And uh, and then finally, we kind of give a, a care plan based on what uh, what we see would be beneficial for that client. Um, and most importantly, just trying to make sure that that care plan is uh, in line with achieving the goals of what that client has set out. Because like, you know, our, our teams kind of mentioned, it's, 
some people may be coming from an injury standpoint, but some people might be coming for something different because they are incorporating this into their lifestyle. So their goals might be something more like, I just you know, want to be able to lift my children and play with them. Or it might be something like I'm training for a marathon and, and you know, I want to be able to do all the big marathons like in Tokyo, London, wherever. So uh, you know, we always make sure that our, our care is delivered one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we don't uh, we don't, yeah, we basically spend all of our time with our, uh, with our, our clients and, uh, we make sure that we have a component of manual therapy and a component of movement, um, in every session. So, um, that's, uh, that's the rundown, Nate. Well, so we have a tagline in our company. It's future proof your, bro your, your body, future proof your body. So how does, uh, how does our treatment style then, uh, complement this? Andrew, actually. <laughs> well, you know, I think that number one, I think a lot of people out there um, don't understand how important it is to invest in your body so that you can continue to do the things that you want to do in the future. Um, what we input today will, you know, be uh, the the output of that we'll see maybe not tomorrow. It might be, you know, five years from now, it could be 10 years from now. So a big part of that is educating our, our clients in the world. We want to teach people that, you know, you don't have to wait till things break down before you start taking care of yourself. So there's that mindset first, when it comes to the actual treatment, it's looking at like, where are we, you know, in, in terms of what it is that we do day to day and what, you know, what is that we want to do? How are we, putting stress on our body in a way that's like imbalanced or, um, you know, maybe potentially hazardous. And how can we rectify that by either, um, you know, doing manual therapy, exercise, you know, and, and, you know, a combination of both to optimize our performance, optimize the way that we move our understanding of our body um, so that we can continue to do everything we, we want to do and, you know, future proof ourselves from any potential injury. Awesome. Um, ben, I believe you came up with the tagline, future proof your body. What did you envision actually, future proof meant? I, <laughs> Unless you didn't, actually, I'm not too sure. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. So as much as well, I would like to take credit for that, I will have to credit my co-founder, uh, Scott, with coming out with that tagline. Well, we were going back and forth, me, him, and Mike, but that future proof word was definitely a Scott word. Um, and then when he said that, I was like, yeah, future proof the body, that's the one. Um, but yeah, just to add on to what, to, to what Drew, Drew said is, you know, for, you know, I speak to a lot of people because of, uh, you know, my social media following and I, I get to have direct contact with like, I'm um, just so many people around the world. Um, and I think it's just so interesting that everyone understands that we need to maintain things like your car, your teeth, your hair, your skin, all these things. Like everyone at a baseline understands that we need to brush our teeth every day. Everyone at a baseline understands that like, hey, like my car's getting dirty. I need to clean it. I need to clean my house. I need to clean my washroom. I need to like, like I need to put my clothes in the dry washer, dryer, right? All these things. But when it comes to our knee or like our spine or like our neck, we literally wait till it's like, it's like we can't, I uh, can't move it anymore. And then we start caring, which is so interesting. And, you know, in order for us to push this message, you know, instead of being frustrated, and I feel like a lot of therapists um, online, especially they get really frustrated at, at, uh, um, the pop um, at, at their patients or the population because they don't necessarily value their health or value understand that concept. It's like I really believe that it's our job to make them care. Do you know what I mean? And in order to make them care, you have to make a compelling argument and you have to speak their language. You can't just speak from going like you know going down. And be like you should do this. It's like nah. Like I don't understand why I need to like you know brush my spine, floss my muscles. Like explain to me why I should do that. You know, in a way that is digestible to me. You know, and sometimes a lot, like I get lambasting on social media sometimes because I try to speak their language. And sometimes that language is not, is meant for the, the general pop and it's not meant for therapists and therapists think I oversimplify things. But what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to bridge it. So at some point in time, when I'm able to speak the way that, you know, we all understand how the body works, it won't come off a certain way. You know what I mean? We have to gradually get them to come to, to our level by slowly educating them, speaking to them in their language. And over time, they will understand the complexities of the body the same way that we do, right? And then we can start talking in, in terms of biopsychosocial and all this other stuff that we want to talk about, you know? Um, 
but yeah, but to your point, that's future proof your body. So. Yeah. Um, I think this next question kind of segues into future proof your body then, because earlier we mentioned, uh, that there's a mission to make self-care a lifestyle. Um, I don't know if we're beating a dead horse, but Kayla, can you expand on that and how like this future proof concept, how myo detox is approaching this making self-care a lifestyle? Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny that we're on this question because I just read in the chat, I know we're supposed to wait till the end, but I thought this was interesting. Kareem, I hope I said that right. He asked, or he said, many patients seek to graduate or be discharged from PT and often are looking for a quick fix. I've been trying to avoid using those terms. Any advice um, for young PT? And Kareem, this is something I talk to my clients about every single day. Therapy and taking care of your body has to be a lifestyle because it's naive for any of any of us to think that our day-to-day -day life does not create stress on our body. Whether you're at the computer 40, 50, 60 hours a week, whether you're doing hair with your arms up like this as a hairdresser, whether you're flex forward doing tattoo, like being a tattoo artist, every single one of us does something every single day that over time is going to place accumulative stress on our body. So if we're not taking care of that on a regular basis, then yes, of course, we're going to end up with pain and we're going to end up with inner injuries. And, you know, I, I come from a sports background. I worked in sports performance before this, and it's normal for our clients to be with us all year long because they're doing sports all year long. And if you look at any professional athlete, they're getting treated five to seven days a week because we look at an athlete and we go, oh, they're playing basketball every day. They're in the gym every day. You know, they're working super hard. So they need to be uh, doing treatment, recovery, et cetera. But we don't look at the general population the same that's in the gym, you know, maybe not every day, but as much as possible dealing with their kids at work every single day. We don't, for some reason, we don't look at that as the same type of stress. So what I've been trying to teach my clients and the other therapists I work with is, you know, that word discharge doesn't actually make sense because we're always going to have to do something to continue maintaining and optimizing our body and how it moves and how it feels so that we can feel good as long as possible. That's a really good answer. <laughs> um, well, Andrew, a lot. <laughs> yeah, so, um, well, Andrew, could you maybe, uh, like further expand on that? Like, you know, like especially the whole like movement optimization thing. I think this is a relatively, like I feel like social media and just the, the general, the consensus and rehab that there seems to be a focus on this. So can you maybe expand on like that thought process with myo detox? Yeah. yeah, I think that if you think about like movement, I mean, there is no wrong way to move. There is, you know, every person moves differently. Every individual is, is, is built and shaped differently, but there are ways to move more efficiently. And part of that is having the available range of motion, having the right amount of control of, and uh, coordination of muscle firing. And, um, you know, all of these things that, you know, we kind of all understand that there's a little bit of a baseline standard for this. Um, as much as we want to allow for uh, just, you know, everyone's unique, uniqueness, you know, we, we'd like to encourage people to try to move as, as efficiently as possible, control their body that way. And um, the, the kind of central focus of a lot of our treatment is to understand that, you know, you might not be perfect, but we're going to try to make you move as efficiently as possible with whatever you've been given. And so if there's an area we can improve, if we can improve your range of motion, we're gonna get that range of motion from, from you. And if there's an area of strengthening that needs to you know, be worked on that we can help build your, um, uh, will help contribute to your movement optimization, then, um, then we'll do that. But at the end of the day, the more efficient that you move, we feel that the more longevity you will have. You know, you'll be able to do what you wanna do longer than you know, if, you know, if you're, uh, you know, swinging a golf club in your own like eclectic style and you, you know, it's, it, it works for you, but it looks like it's, you know, putting a bit more stress in your low back and your hip than it should. You might have really good scores for, you know, the first six months, but, you know, 
five, 10 years down the road, it might look a little bit different. I think I, I You're making it sound like Happy Gilmore could use a lot of uh, our movement optimization. No, Happy Gilmore, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, would, he wouldn't have a long career. <laughs> I have, and Kayla, you're going to expand on that? Yeah. You know, the last thing I was going to say is, you know, you have to meet the client where they're at. So, you know, maybe they, you know, after they resolve whatever injury or pain they may have came in with, maybe they want to come see me bi-monthly. And, you know, I might not need to see them that often, but if that's how frequently they want to see me to be held accountable and make sure that they're moving well and they're continuing to improve, then by all means. But typically what happens is we we start to see our, our clients more on like a maybe every every month or every other month. So it really depends on their lifestyle and, and how we can fit into it as well. Um, so Kareem, I did see at the end of that question, you're saying, you know, how can I keep clients happy and without them feeling taken advantage of? And, and that's a big part of it. It's just meet them where they're at. You know, if they can only come see you once every quarter, it's still, it's still something. And they're still getting that checkup, just how you would with your regular teeth cleaning to prevent uh, you know, cavities, it's a little checkup. Okay, what do we need to tune up on this session? Here's your homework. I'll check in with you. I'll send it. You can always reach out to me. So um, it really just depends on the client. You know, you never want to take advantage of any clients. Oh, that's beautiful answers, guys. Um, you know, my next question is like, you know, there are a few PTs that are probably not as familiar with mild detox, but they're interested in like, when people are wanting to join our team, like what are we looking for in, uh, in a physical therapist that's interested in mild detox or just in general? <laughs> I think Shane and Kayla, cause you guys are like on the ground a lot more. I mean, I don't know when it, when it comes to what we're looking for, it's just really like therapists who lead with, um, you know, empathy, compassion, the willingness to learn and to evolve right? And to continue to grow as a PT throughout their career, you know, our whole team, we are constantly learning from each other. We're constantly doing workshops. We all understand that we might not know everything and, and things may change. Research may change. So it's this constant, um, you know, like eagerness to learn um, and approaching just every single client with sincere um, compassion and, you know, what's really cool about our company is that, you know, maybe, maybe you don't want to just treat clients um, for the next 20, 30 years. You might, you might have a passion for teaching and you might not want to go into a college setting or, um, you know, a school setting. So we actually have opportunities in our clinic to become something like a lead uh, therapist where you are mentoring and teaching some of the younger therapists um, or maybe you're more into social media and uh, just getting out there to the world. So we might have you be more involved with that side of things. So there's a lot of uh, room for opportunity. And, you know, we're pretty open as like a, a young company to um, kind of like adding like new branches to, to our company. And we don't even really know what that might look like in the future. Okay, I don't think I can say that I'm a much better answer than that, Kayla, but just to dovetail a little bit with what, uh, what uh, she said, I think the growth and the willingness to learn is such a big part of what um, keeps our company going and what's the, what makes us so great and what makes us kind of want, wanting to come to work every day and, and why we love working together. Um, so there's so much, if, you know, whether you're a, a new clinician, you're, you're a new grad, you're about to graduate, or you're someone who's been a, you know, been a therapist for a few years or X amount of years. Um, there's room, there's room to grow, whether it be professionally, clinically, personally, you know, we, we're all about personal growth as well. Not just, you know, can you, you know, not just, just becoming the best physical therapist or chiropractor you can possibly be. That's obviously a goal that we want everyone to get to, but we want you to develop as a person as well. And that's very uh, on top of mind for, you know, from the, from the top down. Um, another thing is just, you know, we want, we want people who care because everyone else is really cares about each other in the Clint and the company. And we care on multiple levels. People care about us, each other. Also, we care about our clients a lot. So that's what it comes down to. And Vin alluded to, uh, said in the beginning too, just he really cared about his clients and that's what we do. And that's what we want to do at bottom line. We just care about them a lot. We want to 
deliver the best amount of care. And that also kind of gets uh, layered in and kind of gets layered into what we all do together. And that's kind of, everyone has such a, everyone's like on the same bus to the same destination, which is getting good quality care for our clients and just, and just caring about the profession. So we just care on so many levels. So you generally love PT, you love working with great people. I mean, that's kind of who we're looking for. I like that, I like that, people that care. So Nathan, I'd love to just jump in for a moment. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. If I can. Um, hi everyone, my name is Hilak Cream. This is baby Asher here. Um, so I am the director of people and talent at Myo Detox and it's um, so incredible to hear our um, team here share all this, these little gems. I'm even learning so much. Um, but I also I wanted to share that something that makes our um, company unique is we have a, an entire learning and development um, team that we just started actually last year. We felt that there was a gap in the business um, for um, really doing structured learning. And so what we did was actually pull a physiotherapist who happens to have, be in the practice for about 20 years. I mean, he's now our learning and development manager, and we've got about three different programs going. So we started an Evolve program, which is for our high potential um, therapists, as well as our front desk team. We do um, specialized leadership training for our clinic directors. Um, and so we have all these incredible opportunities that I think really make our business unique um, that you don't necessarily find at other um, physical therapy businesses like ours. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Sorry, ahead, can I yeah. jump in one yeah. second? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 just to add on to this, like, you know, um, the reason why, like, you know, I I value um, you know, growth so much and then helping people uh level up quickly is because, you know, on actually uh, me and Drew have spoken about this all the time. You know, back when we were we were we graduated and we were young therapists, like no one wanted to help us out. You know, like we were, we were like, Hey, please teach us. And like, people just wouldn't help us out. The therapists were very like, Oh, like you figure it out on your own because I had to figure it out on my own, you know? And because of that, to be honest with you, I felt like the first five years of my career was really slowed down because I had no mentors and I didn't really know how to go about finding people and, and growing in the profession, you know? And to tell the truth, I almost quit the profession because I was so um, discouraged that uh, I didn't know how to get better. You know, and then obviously, thank God, like I, I you know, figured it out and, and joined with a bunch of great people. But, you know, I do not want that to happen to any therapist, uh, you know, young therapists coming out of school now. They should be mentored and nurtured because if they're mentored and nurtured, they would be amazing. And, you know, I talk to Drew and, you know, everybody in the leadership all the time. Like, I want everybody to be better than what me and Drew have done in our careers. You know what I mean? I want, I, I just want to create the next you know whatever I don't even know the name I'm, I was gonna say like Ronaldo or like Messi or you know because I'm, I'm so in this football world right now but like you know I just want to create the best the best therapists and the best loving caring people human beings in the world you know and that's that's the goal and that's the mission and in turn that in my opinion will create the best company and in turn that will create the best patient experience you know so yeah oh, that's awesome so Ben, I'm gonna leave this question to you and a little bit of truth too like what's going on with my detox what's next do you want me to start or do you want to, you want to start? I uh, start, you start. <laughs> me? Okay. Uh, um, I think like, you know, one of the main issues is like um, that we're trying to deal with in terms of like, how do we, um, you know, push our, 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 our ideas uh, to the world is, you know, and sorry, help as many people as possible um, is, you know, limited by the brick and mortar experience because, you know, right now currently, you know, doing brick and mortar takes a lot of time. And, and, you know, we currently only have clinics in, for example, like Toronto, Vancouver, and LA, you know, in every new region that we open, it takes like, you know, a year to a couple of years to really start going. Um, so we feel like we want to reach as many people as possible, even faster to recruit even more people to in turn change the rehab landscape as quickly as possible. And one of the main things we're working on to do that is uh, the, the digital experience, which is essentially the app, um, you know, and, I'll leave you to speak on, on the app further in detail, but like the thing about, you know, when we're talking about like accessibility, like we want to make healthcare slash physical therapy accessible to everyone in the world. Right. And at a cheap price and that like, you know, like, and sorry, accessible is not only in terms of like pricing, you know, I mean, pricing is an automatic. Yes, obviously, 
make it freely available as possible, you know? Um, but accessibility, I also use the word accessible to describe someone who, who is like, this is not accessible to them because they do not value their body. This is not accessible to them because they do not understand why they should be using this app to take care of their body, right? So not only do we are we gonna like price point it to make it accessible to everyone, we're also going, going to like go out there and really put a lot of uh, resources behind teaching the entire world on why it's important to take care of the body. And Drew, with that, I'll throw it to you. <laughs> Whew, you give all the good stuff. No, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be digital offering. I'm super excited about, um, you know, it's, it's basically uh, an extension of the brick and mortar experience. We want our, uh, one of the biggest pain points for clients is, um, you know, being reminded of when to do exercises, what exercises to actually do, how am I actually doing, like how, how like what's my progress, um, a lot of these things that, you know, we, you don't get from a piece of paper with a couple of photocopies with, you know, some stickman drawings or whatever, so we're really just trying to like, create a little bit more of an extension of that experience at home and really educate people how to take care of themselves a bit better. Um, so uh, that plus, you know, a, a number of other functionalities that, you know, are, you know, maybe living in the year 3000, but we'd love to see happen uh, sooner rather than later uh, with respect to, you know, wearable, wearable tech and, and, and all that sort of thing as well. Um, we're also uh, rolling out educational offerings, some of our kind of um, signature mild detox, like, you know, uh, approaches uh, uh, and takes on manual therapy and with movement. So uh, those are being rolled out this year. And, um, you know, we're continuing to expand our brick and mortar locations um, in Canada and the US. Uh, we just opened up two new clinics in the LA, um, the LA region and, um, you know, continued growth in Toronto and Vancouver in 2022, as well as LA. So um, lots on the go. Um, some sometimes I, I I don't know the list can get can go on for forever. So but uh, I'll stop there unless there's anything I miss, Vin. Then anything no, else you want to share? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's um you know from from our end uh, that's uh that's all the questions I had to help guide this conversation. And thank you all for for answering. Is there anyone in the audience that has any further questions they want to expand upon? I did notice that uh, Anne had asked about clinical sites. Um, I know Vin and Kayla have answered that too, but I do want to emphasize like we do value. I think that there's there's value in clinical mentorship that maybe you want to expand upon, Drew, that we do in Canada. There was a question there about the the. Um, I think it's actually about taking students. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, is it uh, in particular in Canada in particular, or is it? Uh, I mean, company-wide, we 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 do take students. We um, have uh, partnerships with the local universities, um, Vancouver, Toronto, and uh, NLA. Um, we um, it, it, we you know take them through their clinical rotations. Um, we have different terminology in Canada, so um, you know we call them placements. So I don't know if that's uh, if that's something used widely in the U.S., but um, uh, yeah. So we. We do take on students in the physical therapy programs. You know, we have also taken people through uh, shadow sessions that we have structured in our company. People are interested in even just learning about the profession. They want to join, uh, they, they want to, you know, learn about physical therapy as a whole. Um, you know, we have um, some of those students shadowing us as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, we feel that we, you know, want to contribute to the profession, um, educating um, therapists at every stage of their career. So like, that's like, in school, once they graduate, you know, we've, um, you know, done many educational offerings for po postgraduate study um, to uh, therapists and, and, and um, not just physical therapists, chiros, L um, massage therapists, LMTs, um, you know, so oh, hopefully that answers the question. But. Yeah. And Kayla, do you want to expand on that? Yeah, just to clarify, in the U.S. currently, we are always open to having therapists and students come in to shadow, um, honestly, as often as you want, we just have to set it up. However, right now you wouldn't get to do that as like a clinical experience where you receive credit, not quite yet, but we actually are actively working on that. So hopefully soon, we're still very young, a uh, new company in the US. So um, I think that's gonna be really exciting as well. 
And then there's a question in the panel from Josh. Um, oh, thanks for your kind words, Josh. Um, you all have such a beautiful brand. How do you manage it so well and give constant attention to it? Um, I don't know, Vin, you want to expand on that? And Kayla too, and Shane, all our mirror, yeah. I mean, you, I mean, it's, it sounds like I'm just repeating myself, but you just got to care a lot, you know? Like if you, if you care a lot, you're just gonna, you know, you wake up every day, it's like, you know, mild detox was my baby for like seven years, you know, I wake up and every day I'm just like, how's it doing? What's, how's it going? And then, you know, over time, like I started accumulating a lot of, of great people around me to help, you know, enhance it, help it flourish, help it grow, nurture it, blah, blah, blah. And to tell the truth, even uh, to this day, it's like, um, I'm actually stepping back because I have people like Andrew and Aaron, all these great people that are, are stepping in to like really help run the brand because, um, you know, my role now is actually, you know, the, the mild detox is now an 18 year old kid and doesn't care about what dad says anymore. It's just like, dad, go away. I want to like go hang out with my friends and Andrew and Aaron are the new cool friends. You know what I mean? And he, he, <laughs> mild doesn't care about me anymore. You know, um, I'm joking, but, um, yeah, it's just really you got to care, and then obviously just just have a lot of great people around you to to oh, to um, help maintain it, and also be very aware of like your your own shortcomings. You know, I'm very aware, self aware of like what I can help Mayo or my brand with, and I'm very aware of what I cannot help um, Mayo with. And what I cannot help Mayo with, I bring in the best people that can help Mayo with. You know what I mean? Um, so. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. I don't know if Kayla or Shane or Andrew, you guys have anything. Yeah, I mean, I think something important to note is our, our brand, you know, being aesthetically pleasing or, you know, beautiful, as you said, we, we do that on purpose because we want it to be um, something that people feel really comfortable in. We don't want it to feel stuffy and, and like, oh, there's something wrong, you know, like all white walls, you know, we want it to feel like something that they would want to incorporate into their lifestyle and to their routine. So that's why we, we do emphasize the, the aesthetic and the brand and the look, we're trying to give it a more modern approach um, so that more people are willing to come um, spend time with PTs and Kairos. <clears throat> um, oh, go ahead, Shane. Sorry, just to expand on kind of what uh, Vin and Kayla were talking about in terms of that question. Um, our team is so great, and that's why how we're able to give constant attention to it on the brand side. Um, but on the on the ground level within the clinic in that in that one unit, myself and Kayla were able to focus on the clinical stuff on our clients. So we have great team members around us who can give attention to the brand side and give constant attention to it that um, that we won't unfortunately have enough time to because. Our focus is on the is on treating clients, mentoring um, younger therapists, or mentoring new therapists. Um, so, and I think without that team, um, when you have so many different tasks to do, things get muddied. Things don't get done to the best of the quality that they can. So that's one great aspect of working on a, a great team like this is that we can really can do well on multiple fronts. We have great members doing each thing within the company and within the brand. Yeah, so lots of support for us, for sure. Um, Pablo asked a good question about um, how if, if we take insurance or cash base, this is definitely an operational question. Um, Andrew, you wanna maybe tackle that one? Yeah, so currently at the moment in the US, we're uh, cash-based um, out of network. Um, so um, it is something that, um, yeah, let me just wanna make sure that I'm answering this question. The, yeah, and second from the expansion plan. Okay, yeah. So yeah, currently uh, we're we're cash based uh, out of network. So um, we do provide super bills as far as insurance is, is concerned. Um, it's something that you know um, is not a, a a hard no or a hard stop, but we just wanted to make sure that we could control the um, client experience and and um, and also the care that we provided. We we just didn't want to be hemmed by um, by certain things. So uh, wanted to be able to dictate that on our own terms so we chose to kind of be in this this model yeah and we're definitely looking into eventually accepting at least some insurances but as you all know here it's very difficult especially in the u.s to have that balance of being a, a practice that accepts insurance but also maintaining uh 
quality because of the time constraints, right? And the reimbursements that we're getting in our field right now. So, you know, I would love for us to be an insurance model and be more accessible for everyone. Uh, but at this point in time, um, the super bills are like the best that we can do. So that is helpful for some clients as well. And then maybe Vin can expand on this and Andrew, but the second question was, uh, how do we actually approach expansion in various regions? Um, I can just jump in. Uh, as far as expansion is concerned, we just want to make sure that um, a the, um, the, the, cl the clinics that are, are um, the current clinics are nice and healthy, um, obviously, but, you know, a lot of the things that we look into is like, you know, the market, the demographics, um, the, the different, um, uh, in terms of, you know, even picking real estate, we, we look to make sure that the, the different like co-tenants or the, the different businesses around that are, are businesses that our clients would also go and, um, and visit or, uh, services that they would also, uh, seek out um and you know the the other thing that really dictates our our business and expansion uh strategy is the development of leaders and that's why we've invested in a leadership development team to make sure that we can grow like the next crop of young leaders so that we can you know we need unit level leaders at each clinic and there's there's a leadership team there that there's a there's a clinical director, there's a, a lead therapist. So somebody that's responsible for just the overall management of the clinic and the, the performance of the clinic, but then also somebody that's managing the growth of the therapist and making sure that they're they're clinically apt and, and they're mentored. Um, and then we have an operations lead. So somebody that you know is um, a non-clinician, but is also helping to manage the, the, the clinic. So you know, making sure we have uh, the right leadership in place, we're developing leaders, um, and then, um, you know, honestly, where it's cool. So we love LA, um, you know, expansions to like other parts of the country, uh, you know, that, uh, that um, you know, we have in mind, you know, places like New York, Austin, you know, other parts of the West Coast, they're all kind of like on the map for us. But um, yeah, I, I mean, honestly, having the best people and, you um, like, and the best leaders, like that's honestly like one of the biggest things that dictates our growth and expansion strategy. Oh, awesome. Uh, Shane or Kayla, I think you might be best to answer this, but we got a question from Sarah. How do we ensure that all the therapists adopt the same mindset as the company when working together? Hmm. That's, a, that's a hard one. <laughs> you know, that is a very challenging question. And sometimes that doesn't happen, right? Um, for the most part, we tend to attract people that already have that same like thought process or the same values, which is really helpful. And then, you know, as we take new therapists on, we really, we really take a, a lot of time to really emphasize our values, um, you know, culture being a really big one, our internal culture. Um, and, you know, like any company, there may be one or two therapists that it, it just doesn't, it doesn't mesh over time and that's okay, right? And typically they'll find their way out. But for the most part, I, I feel like it's almost like a magnet. We tend to attract like-minded um, therapists and colleagues. And also, when you're, when you're mentoring a therapist or new therapists that come on board, a lot of time we, I, I just boil it down to what's our bottom line, what's the goal, and that's to deliver the best quality care that we can deliver. So when everyone's on the same page of that in terms of get, you know, bring your best in terms of quality care, uh, look at the clients, really care about what um, their best interests and, and helping them reach their goals. Um, when that's kind of like, when it kind of boils down to that, very kind of can be very reductionist, but when that's kind of the ultimate goal and kind of getting good outcomes for the people that come and seek our help, that's everyone's on the same page in terms of that type of mindset. Um, so yeah, you're gonna have different individuals that come in, everyone have gonna have different personality uh, types and, and different uh, interactions, but when it comes down to it, everyone's on the, always on the same page of just living the best quality care that we can to our clients and our patients. Awesome. Um... Pablo actually has a follow-up question with respect to our billing. Uh, our billing. Uh, 
we how do we how do we approach people that ask us why don't you take insurance can i get it covered i know we might might have expanded on that but that's actually a good question to answer i think Hale or shane especially you guys being on the unit level there how do you answer that question i mean to be honest we do get this question all the time and it's it's quite simple we don't take insurance because we want to be with you one-on-one -on -one the entire time. And in order to do that, we are not able to, you know, actually have an insurance model. It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense for us. So usually clients can understand that, okay, I'm getting one-on-one -on -one time with a therapist for the entire hour. Um, there's no text. So it's really more about, uh, we're just kind of maintaining more of like a quality <laughs> Uh, in our clinic. And that's why we can't take insurance at the moment. Now, when they ask, can I get it covered? I usually say it depends because I never want to give them an answer and then it doesn't happen. So usually if you have pretty decent insurance, what they'll do is we'll submit a super bill and then that will go towards their deductible and just like any out of network um, provider. And then from there, they'll be reimbursed based on whatever insurance they have with that company. And to be honest, sometimes it's good. And then some companies, they just don't really reimburse um, much at all. So we can never promise that, unfortunately. But sorry. with that said, what's great is we don't need to see our clients as often. So we're typically not seeing clients two, three times a week. We see our clients in the beginning, typically once a week you know, maybe for four weeks, six weeks. And then from there, we're really starting to space them out because I don't want to have to see my client all the time. And I know that they don't want to because I'm also thinking about their finances and their life as well. So the goal is for them to see us as little as possible um, and then come check in with us, you know, once a month, you know, once every other month. So I hope that answered that question. Uh, that's a perfect, uh, that's a perfect response there, Kayla. And also kind of to piggyback on what Kayla said about seeing clients less often. And a lot of times we have to have the conversation with clients in terms of getting them to do their homework. So what they do at home is just not as important, if not more important than what we're going to do here in the clinic. So just reinforcing what, um, what we do in terms of education, you know, exercise technique, just all those things that are going to help them in the long run to get better. When we're all on the same page as that, then they can understand a little bit more. I don't have to come see the therapist th three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'll just come in once a week. You know, we'll do what we do in the clinic and then it's my job from there when I'm not there to do my, own, do my homework to get better. Um, Nathan, if I can just jump back to Sarah's question um, around how do we sort of maintain consistency and quality assurance. Um, we have an entire clinical development team um, that um, makes sure that we um, send out to different regions to do trainings like Future Proof Level 1, Level 2. And I was wondering maybe, Andrew, if you want to speak to that. Right, yes. Um, uh, well, as far as like our, um, our education offerings, uh, you know, we have a, a team that um, goes out to our various regions. Um, we go to Toronto, we go to Vancouver and LA, and we, we run in basically internal courses. Uh, sometimes we, you know, open up a spot or two for external um, participants um, who are very keenly interested in. We train people on our, um, our approaches to manual therapy and to movement. Um, so from a, from a clinical standpoint, it creates a bit of a golden thread so that our therapists are all trained in um, a similar, um, uh, uh, at least a similar thought process um, and that um, it does create some consistency across the board. Um, and then, you know, maybe even deeper to that, a lot of what uh, allows us to create a bit of, um, of alignment across the company amongst our therapists and even our, our, our support team as well um, is just the, the constant um, the, the, the cost of communication of like our values, right? If, you know, we, we have our company's core values and, you know, our mission and vision and whatnot, and all of that stuff needs to be communicated very, um, consistently from all levels of leadership and, and amongst each other. Um, otherwise it's really hard to get everyone on the same page. It's really hard, especially with a, a multi-regional, uh, company in two different countries, uh, with different, different slang and vernacular and, and, you know, pronunciations, 
it, you know, it takes a little bit of um, extra communication in order to get everybody online. Awesome. Um, does anyone else have any further questions for our panel here in the chat or Bueller, Bueller? <laughs> Ahila, you want to end off with a final message at all, or just a goodbye, or <laughs> not too sure how these typically work. <laughs> I can say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, any final messages for a panel no, at all? Yeah. No, Kayla, yeah. you're, you're you're excellent. No, you know, I'm. I thought this was so much fun. I'm actually really excited, and I have all these ideas now that I'm like, wow, there's so many things we could talk about. Um, together as therapists. Um, and I think it's just really great to get on here and to share ideas. We all have the same goal at the end of the day. We all got into this profession because we care about helping others. So why not learn from each other and help our entire field grow um, in the right direction? So thanks all for joining. You can find all of us um, on social media. We can drop our emails. We'd love to hear from you if you have other questions. And thanks for having us on. Yeah, and, and one last thing, I think that we potentially might be doing another webinar, maybe. Um, um, and so if you guys have topics that you guys want us to cover, um, you know, um, we will, we would love to come back and, you know, talk more in depth, because this is kind of more like a, an intro of like how we operate, but we would love to talk about stuff from anywhere from like, you know, specific, like, hey, how do I become the best therapist ever? You know, like, how do you do that? Or like, hey, you guys want to learn how to like, Hey, I want to learn how to communicate well with my patients. Cool. We can teach you how we can do a whole full workshop on that. If you want to learn anything you guys want to learn in the space, um, you know, we, we, we would love to help you guys grow as therapists, We're, regardless of if you're Maya or not Maya, we just want the profession to, to, to grow. So, um, and we want to make our contribution, even though me and Drew are Canadian, but we love everyone. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so thank you so much for your time and yeah. Sarah, thank you for having thank us. You, yes. Yes. Wait, thank you, Sarah. I have one more question. Can you expand yes. on how can people reach you if they do want to do another webinar or see you guys again or give you an idea for what comes next? What's the best way um, to find That's because I'm so bad at organization. I'm going to like ask Hila that. Hila, what's the best way for us to like streamline this situation? Is it, is it email or what do you think? Like, yeah, is there email, a... we can, um, you can also follow us at Maya Detox and we can respond back with any specific questions. So um, at Maya Detox and maybe, sorry guys, Asher has COVID and we're dealing with daycare closure. One second. I'm so sorry. Um, if, if the presenters maybe want to drop your um, Instagram handles, if you're comfortable in the chat, that would be great. We'll go ahead and drop our main Instagram handle in here too. Please be in touch, reach out. We're so thrilled um, to always answer questions. So thank you again for having us APTA. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. And thanks everyone for attending tonight. We know your time is valuable. We value you all. Thank you. All right, I'll end the session now. Bye. Thank you guys, bye. Bye, bye everyone, thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>